It is Thursday, February 11th, 2021, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today, we are talking about last night's World of Outlaws late model show at Volusia. It was a wild one. We're recapping the Super Dirt Car Series win for Stuart Friesen. Plus, we look forward to the USAC Sprint Car Weekend at Bubba Raceway Park and a lot more. So let's jump in. Last night was the first of four race nights for the World of Outlaws Late Model Series at Volusia Speedway Park for Dirt Car Nationals. Tim McCready and Bobby Pierce already have late model wins this week at Volusia, both being dirt car wins. And subsequently, those two made up the front row of last night's feature with Pierce on the pole. 51 cars signed in to compete last night with 33 eventually taking part in the feature thanks to provisionals. Kyle Strickler entered the night as the series points leader and several guys were looking for their first wins of the year, including including Brandon Shepard and his Rocket team. Pole sitter Bobby Pierce was looking for his first ever World of Outlaws feature win when the race started. When everything went green, we were in for a wild affair. Pierce was quickly out to the early lead, but it was only a few laps deep that we went under caution for second running Tim McCready. He had an issue underneath the left rear that caused him to come to a stop. It looked like the suspension collapsed after hitting a bump into turn three. Once green again in the 40 lapper, Pierce settled back in out front with Ricky Thornton Jr. hot on his heels. As the field caught lap traffic, RTJ was able to reel in the smooth operator and take over the lead on lap 12. Pierce was then under fire for second from Devin Moran as the race approached halfway. It wasn't long, though, until we had a multi-car battle for the lead. RTJ had to fend off slatter attempts from Pierce with Moran lurking in third. Inside 10 to go, the battle out front had settled out with RTJ leading, Pierce second, and uh, Devin Moran third. Brandon Overton had worked his way to fourth, and Kyle Strickler was fifth after dropping back, I think, to eighth uh, early on in the race. A caution with seven laps to go for Kyle Bronson set up a wild run to the finish. Devin Moran threw a two-for-one slider into turn one on the restart to take the lead, but Thornton was able to drive back by him down the backstretch. Just a half lap later, though, there was disaster for Moran. Something broke under his number nine out uh, onto the front stretch, which uh, left guys behind him scrambling to avoid the stricken machine. One driver who couldn't miss Moran was Brandon Overton, who piled into the nine right at the flag stand. Both drivers were done for the night. On the ensuing restart, Pierce was able to wrestle the lead back from uh, from Thornton, who then dropped back through the top five with Hudson O'Neill and Strickler on the move. With laps ticking down and Pierce's first outlaw win in sight, we had more drama out front. Pierce jumped the cushion into turn one, caught the wall, and caught, uh, cut down the right rear tire. His devastating retirement promoted Strickler to the lead on the restart, but we were not done yet with the cautions. Coming to two to go, Brandon Shepard and Mike Norris had a disagreement through three and four and onto the front stretch, which resulted in Norris spun into turn one. Shepard later ended up 20th with Norris 23rd. Once Green for the final two laps, Kyle Strickler held off Hudson O'Neill and drove away to his second win in three races this season with the Outlaws. O'Neill was second, Ricky Thornton Jr. third, Jimmy Owens fourth, and Brian Shirley was fifth. It was a wild race with plenty of drama and hurt feelings when it was all said and done. Following the night now, Kyle Strickler's points lead has grown to 34 over Ricky Weiss. Kyle Bronson is third, Scott Bloomquist fourth, and Tyler Bruning rounds out the top five. I don't think anyone would have believed you if you told them that this was going to be the series' top five after the first three events. An interesting development, though, through all of this is it appears as though Strickler is now switching from Lucas to the Outlaws full-time. Following the first nine Lucas Knights, Strickler is 26th in the series standings, but now has two wins in three races with the Outlaws and the points lead. Switching back to his familiar Longhorn chassis and now becoming an Outlaw seemed like a no-brainer for Strickler, Crew Chief Vinny Giuliani, and their team. Strickler is the only driver to finish in the top five in all three races this season, and he and Weiss are the only drivers with three top tens. What a wild start to 2021 for the high side tickler it's been. His average feature finish with Lucas is 22.5, and he didn't transfer out of three B mains uh, a couple of weeks ago. With the Outlaws, he now has two wins and a third, and he's done it basically against the same competition. It's pretty crazy stuff, honestly. Looking towards tonight and the weekend, we still get three more of these races, so strap in and stay tuned. Shepard's Trouble and Thornton's Strong Run last night. Now see the DirtTracker.com analytics prediction formula favor Thornton for tonight. Strickler is a close second from the predictor. You can watch the Outlaws live from Dirt Car Nationals again tonight on Dirt Vision.
In last night's Super Dirt Car Series Big Block Modified race, the early part of the feature was a serious battle between Max McLaughlin and Eric Rudolph, with the two swapping the lead several times. As the race approached halfway, Rudolph was able to establish himself out front working through lap traffic. A restart with 12 to go, though, gave Stuart Fries in the opportunity he needed. He was quickly by McLaughlin for second and then after Rudolph for the lead, grabbing the top spot, coming to 10 to go. He drove away over the final laps to take his second Gator Trophy in as many nights at Dirt Car Nationals. Rudolph finished second, Mike Moreska third, McLaughlin was fourth, and Billy Decker finished fifth. Big Block Modifieds continue tonight and through the weekend at Volusia with the World of Outlaws. You can watch them live on Dirt Vision as well. USAC National Sprint Cars open their 2021 season starting tonight at Bubba Raceway Park in Ocala, Florida. They have three complete programs on the schedule through Saturday night. The track was open for practice last night with 44 cars participating. Chris Windham led the way, being the only car to break the 14-second mark. Brady Bacon, Justin Grant, Kevin Thomas Jr., and Buddy Kofoid rounded out the fastest five. Bacon enters the weekend as the defending series champion, and he kicked it off last season at Bubba, winning both nights. He had the most three-eighths mile wins in 2020 with three and led the series in three-eighths mile average finish at 3.2. He also had the most series wins total with six. Justin Grant trailed with five, and Tyler Courtney, Chris Windham, and Kyle Cummins all had three apiece. Richie Murray told us on his episode of Conversations last week that Florida is often a good predictor of who wins the championship, so this could be an interesting weekend to pay attention to. Besides the five I already mentioned, the field is really stout this weekend. It includes Tyler Courtney, Kyle Cummins, Tanner Thorson, Dave Darlin, Stevie Sussex, Robert Ballou, CJ Leary, and a lot more guys. Following Florida, the series goes quiet until early April, so guys will want to have a strong weekend to set the tone for their seasons. The rookie fight will be an interesting subplot uh, all season as well, with Carson Garrett, Paul Neenheiser, and Noah Gass all jumping into the series full-time. Gas and Garrett both have midget experience, but not a lot of sprint car seat time. While Neenheiser has plenty of sprint car seat, uh, experience, but it's usually been with a wing over his head. So it'll be something to watch there. And also keep an eye on a guy like Jake Swanson, who has had success out west, but will be running the full tour for the first time. The title fight in 2020 was a tight battle all the way to the end, with Bacon eventually prevailing over Chris Windham and Chase Stockin. I wouldn't expect anything different this season. Besides those guys, Justin Grant and CJ Leary will want to get into this thing. And Kevin Thomas Jr. will be looking to rebound after a difficult 2020. Robert Ballou is also back to contend the full schedule after taking some time to get healthy. He's a past series champion who could definitely factor into this thing. And he closed out 2020 with an average finish of just a tick over fifth over the final five races. As is the case with most series, consistency will be key this year. En route to the championship in 2020, Bacon finished in the top five 63% of the time and in the top 10 89% of races. It's a very small margin for error. If you can't be at Bubba Raceway Park this, re uh, this weekend, Flow Racing has you covered with the live stream. Grandstands open at 5 with cars on track at 6 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for winged sprint car action this weekend, the Winter Nationals at East Bay are featuring 360 sprint cars starting tonight. Looks like it could be a stout field of cars. Uh, I know names like Terry McCarl and Tim Schaefer are there. The track was open for practice last night, but I couldn't find results or uh, even a full list of who was on the property. But I've seen a lot of tweets in the last week or so from drivers and teams loading up to bring cars to Florida, so I'm guessing it'll be a pretty healthy entry list. If you can't be at East Bay, Flow Racing will have live streaming coverage all weekend. Speaking of that streaming schedule, there are four items on it today. Dirt Car Nationals continues at Volusia Speedway Park live on Dirt Vision, featuring the World of Outlaws Late Models and Super Dirt Car Series. Flow Racing has a trio of shows, including Winter Nationals continuing at East Bay with those 360 sprint cars, the USAC National Sprint Cars at Bubba Raceway Park, and Flow 24-7. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Quick website note, I write nearly a complete script for these uh, episodes each day, so I'm going to start posting them to dirttracker.com. If you or someone you know is hearing impaired or if you just want to read this instead of hearing me talk, you can find these at dirttracker.com slash daily. Click episode transcript in the show description. I've posted a few already and we will do so every day. We have a new show going forward. 
Uh, today is the last episode of the week, as I mentioned yesterday, um, because of my NASCAR commitments. We'll be back hopefully on Monday with a fresh episode. If you're headed out to the track this weekend, please be safe. Uh, and if not, there uh, will be plenty of things to watch on the streaming services. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Thursday and a good weekend. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review that helps out the show big time. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook and those likes and subscribes on YouTube are appreciated as well. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com. I do check those every single day. You can follow Dirt Tracker on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Dirt Tracker. You can check the website for all kinds of cool dirt racing stuff by visiting dirttracker.com. If you'd like to get email updates from Dirt Tracker, you can sign up at dirttracker.com slash newsletter. And you can follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 